the box and Welcome to the Entrepreneur Power Hour. Today we have Carl, Rick, and Cheryl, and of course myself. And we're talking about the power of gratitude today. Sometimes we don't realize what we're grateful for until we experience loss. And by experiencing loss, it causes pain. But also when we look back and see what's in our lives currently, what we're grateful for, we can sometimes, even though the pain doesn't go away, realize we have a lot of great things in our lives. So, guys, tell me what you're grateful for and how's it helped you in your personal and your business life. Well, I'm so grateful for the the power hour, the entrepreneurial power hour, because I wanted to go back into my little box. I mean, it's like I got hurt, like a wounded little pop, you know. I had to go back and reanalyze things, go back into my little box and let me think this thing over. What should I do about it as to coming back out in, into the public world? And I'm so grateful for the power hour to be able to let me have that opportunity to express my negatives that I picked up of whatever through my life and whatever. And sometimes hurts really put you in a bad spot. So I'm really, really gratified. I have so much gratification for being able to be here, to have friends like I have here that are willing to listen to me and not judge me, as I've been so many times in the past. And I thank you. That's my gratitude. For cool, yeah. I'm glad you actually have the ability to... Uh... Can you mute? Can I mute? Sure. Yes. yes. So, I'm glad you actually have the ability to come on here and express yourself, as a lot of shows and the problem with them is they want you to say certain things. Certain things are good and certain things are bad. Now, I know I say like no religion, no politics here, and that's just out of respect of the viewers and somebody's beliefs. But other than that, I don't want to restrict what someone's saying. I don't want to restrict what someone's seeing or feeling. Because then, how can they really enjoy the show, and how can they really become educated from it if I'm telling them what to do, what to think, what to look at? You can't live life like that. You have to explore, not analyze, as, as we learned. And another big token that I'm grateful for is just learning that, learning to turn the analyzing part of my mind off and being able to express myself and to be authentic with people because that creates so many more relationships and so many more people in my life. And that's that's how I met you guys. That's how I met my brother Chris. So uh, Rick and Cheryl, uh, how has gratitude helped you? Well, Cream, I started on uh, self-awareness, uh, looking at self-awareness probably about 20 years ago. And at first... You know, they'd always say that you do all of the affirmations and everything. Mm -hmm. And they all started with, I am blah, blah, blah. I am blah, blah, blah. And then I realized uh, just a few years ago after working on myself that they were much more powerful if you put, I am grateful for in front of each one of those affirmations. I think that uh, the more you look at something like you, I don't know what's it called, your reticular activator picks things up. So the more you look at something like being grateful, then the more you pick it up, the more you bring it into your life, the more you see it, the more you are aware of it. Uh, so I've really been uh, putting that I am grateful in front of everything, and it really draws it to me. So, I don't know. It's great. <laughs> How about you? Um, I, I, I've learned how to, how to be more grateful in, in my life from the guys I'm hanging around with now. Uh, Carl and Chris and Kareem, they, um, I, I was having trouble adjusting to life. I got struck by lightning uh, probably like 10 years ago. I was trouble relating to people and um, they have really been helping me be, because they don't judge me and they accept me and uh, if, if I do something uh, they pretty much tell me that hey 
you know, you shouldn't do that, or, you know, we don't agree with that, or whatever. They're just up front and honest with me, and I, I really feel that they're my friends, and I don't really have a lot of people that I would call my friends through uh, 56 years of living on this planet. So I'm really grateful to have these people in my life. That's what I'm grateful for. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I never thought that taking the class, we're all in the same class together, pay me what I'm worth. I never thought that, I, I knew I would develop a relationship with these with these people, but I really never realized that I would, they would become family to me and I would begin to trust them and love them and understand where they're coming from and have empathy and compassion for them. That never dawned on me from taking this class. I'm just so honored that I have friends all the way across the other side of this universe from here to Hawaii that I feel like is my family. That's the only reason I came on because of that reason. I said, I love my family. I can't stay away from them. I mean, so many times you get knocked down in this world and when you realize there's certain ones that stood by you, a certain one that never judged you, and it's so awesome to find those kind of people that aren't out just to prove how right they are, or trying to gain the publicity over you, or trying to somehow reconstruct your way of thinking. This is free thinking. We are free to think however we want to think. And that's why I love the, the Power Hour. We have that opportunity to bring that to the public, that we're free thinkers, that we get that chance and that we're free to say what we feel rather than being dictated to, told what to do, how to say it, when to say it. Now, it's not like that. It's, it's not like that. We're here to learn from each other. You can't learn from each other as long as you're dictating to others because the dictators always wind up being the dictators. And the other ones always just trail behind. That's my take. Yeah, I've I've had my fair share, uh, I think we all have, of, I wouldn't say quote-unquote like real dictators, I'm not hanging out with like Stalin and Lenin in the background, but I've had a few people say, this is what you can say, this is what you can do, this is what you can't do, and it doesn't really open up your learning, and what here I want to do is, okay, the subject is being grateful, but what makes you grateful? Do some th thinking, do some soul searching, and then answer it how you feel. Don't like try and make the question to appease me. Don't make the question that you think I'll be right on or that I'll say, oh, that's great. Just speak what you feel. Speak what's on your mind. If it comes from the heart, it's probably all right. If it comes from authentic feeling, it's probably good. It's probably sincere. So on that note, I'm just grateful for everyone who, who shows up and who comes to the show and definitely I'm grateful for you guys. I could sit here and be like, okay, we don't have 10 people on the panel and start getting mad and smashing the keyboard and smashing the monitors and doing all kinds of goofy stuff. But instead, I'm grateful that, okay, we have people here. We have people dedicated to what we're doing. I know I'm dedicated to what I'm doing. So since I'm so grateful that everybody shows up weekly, I, I show up weekly and do this. Someone does. And it's almost been kind of my mission to keep this going regardless of, yeah, you're going to have some great days and you're going to have some bad days. But I'm grateful for both because I know when you have a good day, you, you can look back and say, oh, these couple of days were rough, but I made it through. And that's really the essence of what I'm trying to teach here and what I'm trying to convey to our viewers. I really like that message, Kareem, and I noticed that like before we went on the show, both these guys uh, were talking about you know getting on getting on these shows and doing radio show uh, production because both of them are professionals and I noticed that most of my speech is ahs and ums and then so I'm studying these guys because Kareem is a professional speaker and a musician and Carl edits uh, uh, radio uh, shows and I noticed that half of my speech pattern is ahs and ums and 
and filler words. <laughs> Hawkerine. <laughs> I haven't really looked at that, but one problem that comes with ahs and ums are people keep trying to talk, and they keep trying to talk. And I say, do pauses. If you look at George Carlin, Chris Rock, any stand-up comedian, they'll say a joke. And then they'll pause. Not for like a super long amount. You don't want to sit here and pause like... Because <laughs> then people think it's weird, right? <laughs> but you want to have a timed pause. Like this. Just enough time to think, what am I going to say next? And just enough time to recollect your thoughts. That's one thing I teach to people. Try not to fill words with words. If you don't know what to say, pause for a little bit. It'll come to you. And then try and be in the moment also. Don't think about what's going on. Don't think about your favorite sports team has lost. Don't think about that the food you had you didn't enjoy. Just think about what you're doing now. Enjoy what you're doing now. And that gets rid of a lot of filler words. Also, having a rough idea of what you're going to say. I think a little bit about what I'm going to say. Like I have a format of what I want to say. But most of the time I'm freestyling, kind of like a rapper, except with words. But it's, it's the whole fact of trying not to fill so many words when you don't know what to say. And then people will try and make it, and they'll say, uh, well, um, I don't know. Um, if you say, I don't know, okay, I have a concept I want to talk about. And that is the power of gratitude. If I use ums... Instead of pauses, it sounds way worse. But if pausing is really a good way to, to kill those filler words. Because it gives you a second to think. And I used to have trouble because there would be things called table topics where you have to make a speech that you haven't planned. They'll just pick something out of a hat. Like, tell me your favorite day or tell me your best experience at this restaurant. Or tell me how much you like the power hour. And you have to do a one to two minute speech. Which sounds short, but it's a lot if you don't know what to do. So I used to have problems with that, and that's how I got over that, by speeching on the fly. Just a little tad bit nugget, the other business I do. That's really great to be able to do that on the fly like that. i never seen anybody do that, and that's one of the things that I enjoy about being on the Entrepreneur Power Hour. I get to pick up your training of being a public speaker. Now, I do a pretty good job because I've already been through the ums and ahs and all that because I know what other people say. So it's made me aware of that, and I thank you for bringing that to my attention as well, Rec, uh, when you said that, because I've had to readapt my conversation to become more professional because if I don't, then I wind up getting an audience of boredom. And that was brought to me by Soul himself. People get bored, and what do they do? Click, I'm done with you. you got to keep them interacting. you got to keep that speech pattern fluent without a bunch of things that you don't know what to say. You have to think it out. This is what I want to talk about. Draw it out on a piece of paper, write it out, whatever. This is what I want to say. That way, you, when you do say it, it's not coming out with a bunch of pause words. Instead, it's coming out professional. And that's the one thing that I really respect out of Kareem. He's been a public speaker, so therefore he already knows those words are words that sell. We want to make sure that people want to come back on here. So we have to give them what the world called is, calls is content. I have content, people are going to say, well, why do I want to be on this show for? And we all bring content in our own way, no matter who it is. Like Agnes Talley, she didn't know what to say, but she still has brought content to the pay me what I'm worth. As old as she is and as much as she's already forgotten, she's still bringing content and she's very polite about it. I have much respect for that lady for what she's gone through. 
And not to say that I don't for all the rest, but that one there is 70 something years old and she's standing in there. And I respect that. Just like you respect young people jumping in there, like Kareem like, and Chrysler and Chris and all them young people that are jumping in there, Sarah. I respect that too because I wish I could have had that at the time that I was their age. And that's one thing that I really, really love the Entrepreneur Power Hour for. It gives me that freedom that I didn't have before. I didn't have a way to speak to the universe or tell them how I felt about things. A long time ago, I was actually in a restaurant, and this is an interesting idea that I came across. And I'm not going to put this in a political range, but I was asking about how one country was successful in developing military weapons and why one country was not. And the professor told me, well, one country, they tell you how to do it. One country, they give the scientists free reign, freedom on how they want to do things and how they want to construct health stuff and military stuff and different things people can use throughout the day. And it really dawned on me that when you just give people freedom, when you give an open discussion, when you don't try and regulate everything and have a book of rules and set it down and say, this is how it's going to be. Not saying you shouldn't have a few, like we have a few ground rules, but if you can set a few ground rules and then just let people use their freedom to build something, you will have an awesome show, an awesome product, an awesome group of people because they're not restricted by regulations and they're not restricted by somebody telling them how it should be and how it works and how they have to do a set A of tasks. Not to say that there isn't a, a, a set way. There's a set way to obviously, what do you call it, uh, edit audios. But there's a lot of ways to, to learn how to do that, do that. And actually, I've edited an audio of myself. I learned how to do it on Audacity. If I don't have time, I go to Fiverr. If I don't have time, I you know friends with the audio, so I go to them. Is any of those ways wrong or right? No. But it proves the fact that if you give people freedom and give them a task and allow them to complete it, you'll get a lot better results, I think. And I'm grateful for the fact that I have the freedom to do a show like this, that I have a freedom to put my WordPress stuff up there, and that I have the freedom to express myself in the way I do. And I don't take that for granted, even though sometimes I take it back in my earlier days. Anybody can run with that. Do you got anything, Carl? Well, I can run with it. Yeah, I can always run with most everything. <laughs> you have a certain way with words that most people don't think about. You're more concise. Like, I'm not putting anybody down, but there's some people like, they're on there saying a bunch of stuff that they really don't know what they're saying because they haven't planned it out. Now, you can do it on the fly as where some people have to write it down. And I have such gratitude to be able to be around someone that has that opportunity and has done all that stuff, that public speaking, that playing guitar, that... I'm not afraid to be out in the public. Some people are afraid to. My dad, you couldn't get him to go out into the public to do anything like that. And as I, I as I think back, as I was a kid, the first time I ever had to speak in public or do anything in public, I was a little boy and in my cute little sailor suit, and it was so awesome on me. But I had to get up and do a part in the play, and I was so nervous. Am I going to get this right? You know, when you're like a couple, like five, six, seven years old, something like that. They, I think it's seven. I was actually, I'm like seven. I had been in school a couple of years. I think I was in second grade. I started when I was five. So a couple of years went by, and I didn't, I had such a fear of jumping in and doing that kind of thing. 
And now I feel that fear has been lifted thanks to the Entrepreneurial Power Hour. I have no way of getting my voice out there until I met up with Kareem and Kareem's abilities to make a show like this. Such, such gratitude to be able to think about people that have such technologies that they can put a show together with such freedom. Most of them out there say, oh, you can't say that. You can't say that. Yes, you can. It's just you got to make sure you say something for the betterment of the show. or So that gratitude is so awesome. And to be able to meet people that continually come back, like Rick and Cheryl, they're lifetimers because they like that freedom. They like to be able to express themselves. So I'm going to give that freedom to them now. Um. <laughs> oh, thank you. Like when you guys, like this has been a real learning experience for me also. And when you guys, before the show, when you were teaching us how to properly, you know, speak, and then Kareem takes the time. Here you have an editor and you have a professional speaker. Now, you guys don't know that I spent... How many years with a, a a guy with a doctorate from Princeton in speaking? His name was Don Jansen, and I was president of his company for a year or so, and I traveled around with him and went to all these places and stuff like that. And Kareem's speaking abilities, and Carl, your speaking ability, now that I'm more conscious of it and have you know people to compare it to and stuff like that, Carl's a professional speaker too. Kareem obviously is more polished because he had that training and stuff like that. But Carl, you uh, have a very good presentation. You're not umming and eyeing all over the place. You're very concise about what you, the way you express what you uh, are saying. So I, I'm really grateful just to see, you know, and you guys uh, use these skills because it's amazing. I I realize how far behind I am. And when, I, and when I see uh, that you're editing and Kareem is, and both of you are exhibiting you know, proper ways to present, and it's, I'm so grateful to be around you guys. Thank you. To set an example. Yeah, you can let us know what not to say so that we can <laughs> polish ourselves so we can make it so that you don't have to do work. Well, he already said, like, if you write things down a little bit, so the next time that we do class, I'm going to get a little outline, just a small outline, and a few things that I want to say, and kind of just, like, practice them to get a base down so I won't go, uh, uh and all like that, because I, I think that would help me, but before, I really resisted that, until, like, Carl brought it up, Kareem brought it up, he has natural ability to make it, like, focused, and Carl does too, but I okay. have to things down. To be honest, I don't think I have any more natural ability. I've been reading a book called Talent is Overrated and a lot of people say, well, Mozart was just gifted or let's say I'm, I don't think I was naturally gifted at speaking. I don't think I'm naturally gifted. I think what it is is I messed up so many times as a little boy Carl was saying he was scared. I was so scared to pull the shirt over my head. And I'm pretty sure people would not say at that point I would be a future public speaker. In fact, I had stage fright throughout high school, almost throughout college, till I was forced to make business presentations because nobody else wanted to. And by doing those business presentations, I actually gained some acumen for doing it in a professional setting. And after I did it in a professional setting, I had fun at Toastmasters. But it was the fact that people pushed me in college. They're like, you're going to do this. No, I'm not. Too bad. Do you want to graduate? And I thought, well, I don't want to work at Mickey D's, so I'm going to go up there and do public speaking because my future depends on it. So it was a life or flight type of thing. It wasn't for fun. And the fact that I can do it now is attributable to just putting some time into it. And I didn't sit with a speech coach or anything. I just took time, looked at what professional speakers were doing, looked at what public or actually looked at what stand-up comedians were doing, looked at what people like Les Brown were doing, how they were expressing themselves, and then just trying to emulate some of that behavior. A lot of that, a lot of guitar I learned just by looking at stuff on YouTube. So in the fact of like teaching myself, especially now with the internet, it's not that hard. 
just if you want to put the time in. If you put a little bit more time in than other people, that will actually give you the edge. And I'm just grateful for all the fact that we have so much information now. There's good and bad about it, obviously, with computers. You can get stuck so much in information. But obviously, there's a divide with all of this information we have to go up and pick up a skill like public speaking or playing the guitar. And I don't consider myself special. I just put a little bit more time into looking at what people were doing who are public speaking. And I really started to enjoy it. Once you start getting some positive feedback of, whoa, you gave an amazing speech. That's so amazing. Then you just keep going and going and going. That's why I talked about Kaizen. And Kaizen is actually a way to help you become grateful for whatever you're doing. Because if you have a little bit of success and you feel great, that's awesome. That person really believes in me. When me just started, it was just me and Chris. And I didn't know if I wanted to keep doing it. But then I said, hey, Rick, want to hang out with some fun people? And I'm like, okay, yeah, we have people who believe it. And then Carl, and I'm like, okay, Dada, and then Pete, Marsha, and people who come on here. Um, and I really got grateful for people. I'm like, okay, we have a couple people who are coming consistently. We can't give this up. I feel great. I, and that's why I said, you know, I'm not going to miss a week. And if I do, somebody else will be here in my place. I want to keep it running because I'm grateful for what it can do for people because I'm grateful for this idea and that people are embracing it. And, yeah, I know people say now it's a panel of three. Why is that a big deal? Because eventually it will be a panel of ten, and eventually there will be people trying to get on. It already has been. It's already been. We've had a lot of people on here. Yeah, we so have. This is a little bit of a slack night for whatever reason, maybe football. Maybe just people's affairs in their life, what have you. Yeah. I don't really know. But this is the whole thing. We get this freedom. You don't get anywhere else. I've been scared to death to get up in front of people. I really have, but it's the overcoming effect. When you... You know, when you want to turn around and get right up and do something, you're going to do that. And you're not going to let all the barricades get in your way. That's what you've had to overcome. And I've had to overcome, as a matter of fact, as a young boy. It was stage fright. But I want to ask you, how do, does it matter the amount of people now, Kareem, that you're in front of? Or does... Have you adapted so it doesn't matter? That's where I'm wondering. I mean, a few people is one thing, but a multitude, like, at a concert, tens of thousands of people screaming, and would that be a challenge to you, I wonder? Actually, that will even amplify it more. It will be even more fun. When there's a small number, I'm not actually as excited. You put me in front of... I'm just waiting for that day. And I know it will come when I can play or speak in front of 100,000, a million. If they make a stadium that big, a billion people, I don't see why that's not possible. But the fact that there's millions of people ready to hear a message, I know most people that would scare them and they'd run away. And the Jerry Seinfeld joke of, running into the coffin and they'd rather be in the coffin than doing the eulogy <laughs> but the number to me the bigger the better and before I would if yeah. I looked at my high school self he'd be like okay shut up no don't say that <laughs> but the bigger the better and why I say that is because when you have a big crowd of people you have the chance to really get your message out there and to really add value to a lot of people's lives and an hour you can change the life for the better they might hear you speaking and decide they want to become a public speaker or decide, hey, I can finally do my own show on Google+. Plus. Look how these guys started. Or I can finally build my own business on the Internet or build my own store, go to medical school, whatever they want to do. And you could be the driving force. It's not necessarily the time you put that gives value. It's how much value you use to extenuate your time. And what that really means is I could write a blog post that could take an hour. Do you really care if it took an hour? Do you really care how long if my speech took an hour? Do you really care if it took eight hours? No. No, you don't. But the, 
but the yeah, the value is what really matters. And a lot of people don't get that. It's like Jim Rome says, they pay you twenty dollars an hour. That no, that's your current value to what economic service or good you're performing or giving out. So really the secret I find is to be more grateful because it'll make you feel better. When you feel better and you get in state and that's a concept I learned from Tony Robbins. You can get up there. There could be a billion people, and you'll knock them. If you're feeling the right emotion that you want them to feel, you'll knock them off their feet. You'll knock their socks off. And it's not because you're superhuman or you're Superman or a genius or anything. It comes from the fact that you got heart and you want to talk to these people. So I say it's exciting. Bigger, biggest number. When you actually embrace something as exciting – you change your dynamic of looking at how scary or not scary it's going to be. And I'm not scared. I'm not scared of a big audience. I don't know why people are. Yet, I'm scared the death of skydiving. Some people think it's cool. So, <laughs> Well, to each his own, I reckon. I'm scared to death of jumping on a surfboard, your point. <laughs> but then again, I can't walk too well to worry about that notion. But... <laughs> right. when we have those skills out there we don't even realize the skills that we have like you're not afraid to jump out here you or Cheryl you're in video form now you could be sitting there behind your profile pic yeah you could be but you're not you're not afraid to jump out in the middle of the public like this. Hey, hey, that's enough of that. I thought I, yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. You have that ability. You're not afraid to jump out there in front of people. Some people would be staying behind their profile pic all the time. And I'm not picking on Masha. Love her right to death. I really, really love her right to death. I well, know, it's, Marcia, it's her internet connection. It's the internet connection. Marsha always that. hides behind that picture. I'm serious. I never hardly ever seen her. Well, it's her internet. Her internet and her webcam is not that great quality. That's why I well, believe. Yeah. So I it's a technology it. issue. I don't think it's a fear issue. Because I've talked to Marsha, and Marsha's not afraid to express herself. I think some people... Though, in that light of being scared or wanting to hide, there's a lot of people I've, I've, I've invited on the show. They look at the content. They say it's awesome. I'm like, get on the show. It'll be fun. And they say, no, I, I don't speak my mind so freely on camera. I'm afraid to go on camera. I don't want to show my picture up on the Internet. And really, I think it's a false fear because people are going to see you anyway. You can, unless you're going to walk around in a robe all the time and be one of these speaky <laughs> people walking around, <laughs> you're going to have to face people eventually. You're going to have to communicate with people eventually. I'm not scared to do it at interviews. I'm not scared to do it in public speaking, and I'm definitely not scared to do it here. Sometimes I lower my bandwidth, obviously. I don't have to tonight because it's not a ton of people. But regardless of that, there are some people with legitimate scares about getting in front of people. Now, while that can't be cured in a day, there's different methods you can go about to start expressing yourself and then jumping in front of a camera and you'll feel better about yourself. And one of those I've found is to actually start to just talk to people on the phone, talk to maybe cold call people, just start up random conversations. And then you'll feel that, okay, I can jump on a camera. It's not that big of a transition. It's all about doing small transitions. It's all about breaking plateaus. How do you... well, I think that uh, in their scared mode, I don't know if it's just that they're scared or they just don't feel the worth in themselves that they can express themselves and feel that other people actually want to listen to them. You know? Because That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, it's like 
if you don't feel worthy of your opinion and voicing it and maybe that other people are going to knock you down for it or not think as much of you or something like that, that's probably where they get their, their scared, but in their worth, you know? That's, that's a good that's one. That's a good one. That's a good one. I, I noticed, I, I was thinking you were talking about gratitude. I, I noticed that I'm more gratuitous to nature and to the ocean. Because when I go down to the ocean, it doesn't matter what day it is, what time, whatever, I always catch waves. And I, I, I can really feel like the energy come back to me in nature and in life. And I, I know that I can be more grateful and express it. Because I Uh, I'm afraid to uh, lower right down, though, sir. I can't hear you. Um, you gonna speak up? You can't hear me? Okay, now I can hear you. I just couldn't hear you for a second. Oh, okay, I probably wasn't talking loud enough. I, I apologize for that. Speak up. <laughs> Stand up for your right. Stand so up, big album. I'll, I'll reiterate uh, again and say that I notice it in my life and in nature. If I'm very grateful for catching a lot of waves, I'm so grateful. I just look at the ocean and I, and I look at it and go, it feeds me. It lets me ride waves. It gives me pleasure. It, and I just look at it with such uh, gratefulness that it always gives me what I need. It's an amazing thing. It's like an energy, right? Yeah, it's like an energy. That's what you're feeling every time you want to go. You're so psyched about getting out there and finding that wave, because that's Rick. He's just so psyched. He's got to get out there, and he knows that wave is out there. He's got to get right out there, and he's got to find it. And then as soon as he gets near that ocean, oh, I know that wave is out there. I can't wait to ride that wave. <laughs> he finds you, Carl. Other people look at the ocean and they go, there's no surf today. I, I look at the ocean and go, it doesn't matter. There's a wave for me there. It's going to come. And I just sit there and I know it's going to be there. I've always attempted to take that into business. And I'm trying to turn the corner on that because it works in surfing. Mm -hmm. It does too. In business, I see people do it in business, where they know they're going to help people. They know they're going to get a sale. They know how they're going to approach and talk to people. So, and this uh, Entrepreneur Power Hour and the class that we're in, Pay Me What I'm Worth, is really helping me turn that corner. So I'm glad to... Gratitude. Cool. Awesome. I like it. I like it, guys. Yeah, there wasn't too many people, but I'm still grateful for the people who came. I would like to end it, though. Or actually, we can keep going, but I'd like to uh, put in a real quick call to action here. And since there's not that many people, I'll show you a Tony Robbins video. I think that's good. So. First, I'm going to share my screen. Just, I want to put this in somewhere. Uh, let me see. I kind of like that. It goes way down in the... Yeah, I need to hole. balance it so it doesn't <laughs> do that. Let's grab this. I felt a lot of gratitude being flowing through this whole thing. That was really great. This whole thing has been nothing but gratitude because I feel... I feel filled up on whatever I picked up from from Rick and Cheryl and you. Okay. I yeah. feel a difference because I never really, I've always had a fear of jumping out in front of public. I mean, sh strange as it might sound, I'm a big mouth and everything, but. <laughs> That's honestly what I want to teach people not to do because I was looking around. Someone said, make a blog about your niche. I was thinking, what am I going to teach? Dating and relationships? No. That's too scary for me. Like, so I give somebody like, yeah, you should do this, this, and this. And they're like, she dumped me. I'm like, ah, no. 
how am I, and then teaching people to make money online. There's a million ways to do that. And I want something really unique, and I thought, why not teach people how to speak in front of an audience? And I looked at top fears. I saw, okay, speaking in front of public, speaking in public. Jeez, this is really a big, this is an epidemic. <laughs> Honestly, speaking of, it's it's pe speaking in front of people. It's what we're doing now. It just happens to be over Google Hangout. But what what are they really scared of? It's an irrational fear. I know because I used to have it. So that's what I'm dedicating speakermindnow.com to. And I want to help people, podcasters and YouTubers over the internet make an awesome show and make awesome expressions, make an awesome message, make their message even more powerful. Because I'm learning how to develop a powerful message myself, and I want to teach others that. But if you go to our website, theentrepreneurpowerhour.com, and you type in your first name and your email address, and hit sign me up, you can get a newsletter. I send it out weekly. You can also go to this week's topic and check out what we're talking about in case you have any questions and the newsletter also is going to reinforce that with our trailer video so go to the entrepreneurpowerhour.com also I'll give you guys a sneak peek here into the private member section since we have a little bit of extra time here and the whole goal of this the show only lasts an hour so I wanted something that people could do for the whole time like let's say they want a mastermind about what they're grateful for what they thought about a weekly training there's a lot of things you can mastermind with people on but Facebook in my opinion and Twitter are good but they don't offer that same exposure so obviously there's a dashboard which is the main page and then you can go make your own profile like Facebook you can actually see mine it's where I was you know where I was born where I live what I do, my Facebook, what type of experience am I looking for, or who would I like to be mentored by, obstacles and personality traits, if I have a job, if I have a business. You can also have activity like that's similar to the Facebook wall, and you can see your friend's activity, and you can see all the activity. All the activity is very similar to a Facebook wall. <coughs> it's, it's what people are posting. And the social aspect, you can make friends, groups, there's a lounge, which is just messages kind of similar to Twitter and a Facebook type thing where people can just actually post whatever they're thinking and it can come out as anonymous. You can also have mentions and you can follow people. And there's also this chat bar of your member profile. Click on that. It'll actually take you to a member profile. You can see the friends. You can see who am I following. Also, there's a mailbox. I saw Fiverr had mail and I wanted it ability for people to mail each other in here. Let's say you don't want to do that. Let's say you just want to talk to people. You can actually chat with them. Hi. And it doesn't have the faces, at least not yet, but you can carry on a conversation through chat. You can check your mail from here and you can also go to friends from here. What I want to do is put some podcasts, some the, the best five or six broadcasts we have up there do weekly trainings, give people a chance to get featured on here once it grows and on Blog Talk Radio and create a boot camp of uh, videos. Also, I'm working on a tool to help people track their goals. And once you sign up for the site, let's say you want to find somebody. Let's say Tony Robbins sign up. You click on T and Tony Robbins would be there. Now, you click on K you find, hey, Kareem Mays. And last but not least, there's a private forums place. You can talk about products and services you would like. You can make new discussions, YouTube videos. When and why did you start your business? Where are you in your business right now? What was your biggest problem when it comes to growing your business and support issues? Also, if you have support issues, you can go to this tab. And obviously, there's a video of me again. You can put your name, last name email what you want to do and then send your message I'll get back to you and that's that's just the start of it it's the sky's the limit for this but this is just what I'm working on that'll be now I want to get videos and stuff in here but I'm gonna launch it in a couple of months and for people who are on here regularly I'm gonna give them 
obviously the first 10 people who get on and give them uh, free access to this site. And the site is going to cost a dollar for a week. And then after that week, if they decide they like it and they like the content, and it's going to be consistent content, it'll be 20, uh, only 27 a month. So that's, that's basically the Power Hour and the stuff going on with the Power Hour in addition to our book. Thanks for letting me do that, guys. I know that was a lot of talking. Uh, can you hear this video or should I? Can you hear no. that? No? Okay. Then let me stop sharing. This is one of my uh, ads I threw down for you guys. Let's see, where okay. the heck is it? I said, hey, all. I said, hey, all my great friends. I have made so many. Thanks, one and all. I have learned a lot so far, and I know I will learn more. I have learned a lot from the Entrepreneur Power Hour, and I'm now in Team Seekers University, and I put in um, a couple of your Power Hours, mm -hmm. like three of them, and I put in a Soul Dancer, that one with an introduction worth pay classes journey what have you because we do talk about that here so I post that ad every once in a while so it gets and then I switch these around so it comes up at a different one of these power hours one, okay. I, have, one I have data on there another one I have somebody else on there <clears throat> But that's what I've been doing, slapping that around a little bit so people get a chance to see you about your power hour. That's awesome. I really thank you for that, Carl. I'm going to give you guys uh, something that can really help anybody who's watching this. It's a quick video. It's on, I'm going to cut most of it out, but it's a Tony Robbins video. And he does talk about how being grateful helped him change his income. So I'm going to throw this on the playlist if I can figure out how. Let me see. Go back. I, I guess you can't. I guess you cannot add it to a playlist because it's not letting me. Okay, I'll do that for next time. If I can figure, I'll just save a playlist. You can just put the link in the box, and that's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna have to do, and that way we can listen to it. You know. Okay, let me give it a go. Boom. Boom. My new bed spread I just bought. <laughs> I got a little bit colorful. <laughs> my new bed spread, I, my fleece bed spread I just bought. See it? That's a nice one, Carl. It's nice. A rainbow zebra. I'm surprised you can get to sleep with that at night. It's so bright. <laughs> You're muted, Carl. Yeah, we can't hear you, Carl. You're muted. You're muted, Carl. Oh, unmute yourself. I right. didn't know that. Yeah, well, I just did just because there was background noise and I was trying to... I'm just going to finish it. Uh, I just I wanted to... Help can't help it. I was born in the psychedelic age. What can I tell you? I was born in 1960. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I'm a little psychedelic at times. <laughs> Lucy in the sky with diamonds. There you go. Yeah, Lucy was in the sky with diamonds. Oh, yeah. Yeah, something. <laughs> there was a yellow submarine, too. <laughs> uh -huh. 
But that, I like Donovan. Donovan was the psychedelic one. That was one of them. Grace Slick was another one. Janis Joplin. Yeah, Jimi Hendrix. Right. They was all in that psychedelic age. Gerald, Jimi Hendrix. I can't help myself. I can't help myself. That's why I had to buy something that was quite colorful. <laughs> That's good. Brings your happy mode up there. Better than just being it dark. Does. Crab. It does too. <laughs> you have to see my Teletubbies. I got to yeah. include them. Yeah. They was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> guys, we used to watch those Teletubbies when we lived in Costa Rica all the time. It was the only thing that was on TV, and so they'd be little Spanish. Oh, no, no. Teletubbies, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I used to run my RCs until I lost, until I moved around so much, and now I've lost the remote to it. I gotta go buy another one. Remote controls. I got my remote control vehicle now. <laughs> That's cool. But anyway, I do want to finish this because he makes a good point here, actually. So I'm going to... It's just like one minute, less than a minute. See, my... Uh, That's what I used to do. I used to race RCs. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. My big bite. Claw and all. But that's what happens when you move. That's what happens when you move around too much. You lose things. And in my finger back. Hungry <laughs> <laughs> bastard. Bringing your toys on the hangout. Damn hungry bastard. That right a hole. <laughs> Guess that's why it's called the big bite. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the hangout's all, <laughs> all, all over, isn't it? Uh-oh, no, it's still yeah, live. Oops. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. You're playing with your toys back there. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, for, for the most part, I think we covered everything I wanted to cover. And we did some public speaking ideas, too. So I'm pretty satisfied. I also showed people the membership site, which I haven't been able to do because there's been a lot of people, and they're trying to get out of here. So it actually helped now to have a smaller panel so I could show some of the sites, some of the features. I showed that Tony Robbins video just in the Hangout, and the main purpose of that was to show. He said he started feeling grateful, and he did this incantation. And basically, by doing that, he went from, I think he said, 38 to a million dollars a year. So it can happen for anybody. All just by feeling grateful and putting the work in. So on that note, I want to thank Carl, Rick, and Cheryl, and everybody who viewed this. And next Saturday, I will hopefully see you. And I've also been thinking about doing a special edition call or we'll discuss the same thing, but we'll do it on a different day. So we give other people the opportunity to really learn from this if they enjoyed it and to engage in it and experience it as well on the panel. So for that, that's all I have. Do you guys have anything you want to end it with? I have a great takeaway. I just I just love what we have done to Rick and Cheryl in their speaking. I just love it. You guys have done so much better. I know you've been being more conscious of it. I watched you. I was saying, yeah, he's seeing where his faults are. Now she's seeing them. Oh. And I love it. I love it when we can, when a plan comes together. I'm so grateful that even though there's so many miles separating us that we can share our wisdom. Hey, the Internet's powerful. I'm grateful for that, too, and I'm grateful, you know, that sharing our wisdom and no matter how many people see this can benefit from it. And every hangout, like last hangout, someone was saying like they helped start making decisions from love, not fear. So I can help one person at a time. Who knows how many people we can help eventually and how many people can benefit 
from people like us doing these hangouts on the internet, especially on YouTube. Uh, it's really revolutionary and unique, in my opinion. But with that, have a good night, guys. See you next Saturday and possibly next week.